me tell? Hey everybody, it's Terry, your cheerleader of dreams. I'm back in my office, vacation's over. You know, it's funny because we always say about our vacations that when we start the trip, we're white and happy. But then when we end the trip, we're tan and sad. <laughs> but now I just start out tan and happy because I spray tan, so I'm always tan and I'm pretty much always happy, so. <laughs> so, yes, we're back from vacation. I'm back in my beautiful office here. And I wanted to say thank you for being the sweetest people, the sweetest book club members. I've had so much fun with y'all doing this all summer. In fact, I've got some of your comments here I wanted to read. I thought these were so sweet. And just hearing how this month's book, which is the five things successful people do before 8 a.m., how much you're enjoying it and how much you're um, enjoying stretching yourself and learning new habits. So listen to this. This is from Tiffany Wilson. And she said, all of your book clubs have been life-changing, Terry. Thank you, Tiffany. She said, I'm so incredibly grateful. Um, oh, and she said, she gave me some advice for my hair because I said my hair was damaged. Thank you, Tiffany, for the advice. And then Marie Sand, or Mari Sand, she said she did the three things and was so happy to say she did it. Now, the three things she's talking about is because I gave everyone a challenge to practice three of the five habits. Number one was to pray, whether it's one minute or five minutes. Do something to spend time with the Lord. To read something, even if it's one page, do it every day. And number three was to listen. Gosh, we have someone watching from Belgium. Isn't that amazing? Bonjour. So, she's doing all three of them. And hey, if this is your first time to join the book club, that's okay because I'm gonna recap some things so that you don't feel like you're missing out. You'll be right on target with the rest of us, okay? So, Shanella Rosalia said, I did the three things and I've also challenged my group during my live last Sunday. I feel so good and it's extending my relationship with God. I love it. Lynn Wicklander said, I love being part of your book club. You always motivate and inspire me. My life has changed as a result of the teachings. And I feel so much better about myself. I love that. Um, this is, man, y'all got some unique names. Louisa Natalia Alcaraz. <laughs> she says, also found out that when you read, it prevents Alzheimer's because you're exercising your brain. Isn't that the truth? Just reading a little bit every day. So, hey, it's okay, Melina, if you didn't accomplish them, it's okay. You just start over again. So, uh, let me read a couple more real quick. Chanel Wilson says, I kept going after last week, and I find that when I start my day this way, I actually feel like I'm accomplishing so much. Then she said, the feeling of accomplishment is awesome. And then listen to this. This is Luz Elena Luna Corona. <laughs> what names? I love them. This one says, I have this book, and it's helped me a lot. I wake up I, at 6.30, I drink my tea, I read my Bible, I go for a run, and then I'm ready for work. I'm telling you, they say when you win the morning, you win the day, right? So let me read this one. I thought this was so important that I read this one and then we'll get right into the content. This is from someone named Marque Nikki Minaj. Marque Nikki Minaj, you heard me. She said, you looks younger. <laughs> I just had to read that. I thought it was vital, don't you? <laughs> I look younger, but they said I looks younger, so hey. I'm grateful for that compliment, and I thought it was crucial that I read that today. So, let me just say real quick, this month's book club is all about developing habits and discipline in your life because it's going to take habits to live your dreams, good success habits. Well, I read about this guy who, he was just researching success habits for most of his life, and he actually discovered 1,000 success habits, 1,000! And people always ask him, which one do you think is the most important? And he said, you know what? All 1,000 are important. He said, the 999 that I'm not gonna discuss, they're all important. But he said, the one that is the most important is self-discipline. So that's what we're talking about this month. It's about self-discipline. But before I get into the book, let me just say real quick, the Icing Women's Conference is coming up. We are so excited. Can you see this? 
So some of you are asking, so I wanna answer this question. Yes, we are still having icing Dallas and icing Orlando. And oh, someone just tried calling me. Did it black out for a minute? <laughs> I usually tell my husband, don't call me at 12 o'clock. Um, so anyway, I'm so excited to have my dad, Jerry Savelle, as my guest speaker in Dallas, and my friend Pam Winters is speaking in Orlando. Now, it was funny, years ago when I told my dad that the Lord told me to start a women's conference and call it icing, my dad said, I think I'll start a men's meeting and call it pudding. <laughs> pudding, I don't think it's gonna work. So anyway, he was kidding, but I'm excited about this because I've asked my dad to specifically talk about the favor of God on your dreams and goals. How do you increase in the favor of God? Now, that's what my dad specializes in. And here's the thing. When the favor of God comes on your life, your dreams and your goals, God's gonna open doors in your life that cause people to say, how did that happen? How did that happen for you? And you'll be able to say, it's the favor of God. It's not something you can make happen, it's something that comes on you. So how do we increase God's favor on our lives? So we're gonna talk about that. And let me just say, there's something about getting in an environment where you're around people who, first of all, you're in the presence of God through the worship and the teaching, but also you get an environment of success-oriented people who want more out of life, who have a, a passion to fulfill their life assignment. Whenever you do that, it just comes off on you. It's contagious. Faith is contagious, and it causes you to just realize God has so much more for my life and I'm going for it. And what I love is hearing the stories of people who come to Icing, they get in that environment, they get the tools, they get the teaching, and then they come back the next year and they're amazed at what God has done in their lives in one year time, one year's time. So, you know, I was thinking about my two dogs. Some of you see them on Instagram. I usually post them in my stories. Um, Pepe La Joie, who's my little Pomeranian, he's like this big, and then we just adopted a dog back in February named Beauregard Beignet. <laughs> and he's a big old chocolate lab. Well, let me just say this real quick. Pepe La Joie is the most timid, scared little dog you've ever seen in your life. Like he is so afraid of hardwood, he will not walk on hardwood floors. He stays on the carpet. You can forget about travertine or marble. <laughs> <laughs> he's just afraid of everything. Well, he stays on the, he'll stay on the carpet all day long. He won't even eat because he just will not cross the floor to get on the hardwood floor. Well, all of a sudden we adopt Beauregard, this big chocolate lab who's just, he's a puppy and he's not afraid of anything and he runs all over the house and you know, it's just hilarious. Well, since we adopted Beauregard, Pepe La Joie has become a brand new dog. He will cross the marble floor. He'll cross the hardwood. He'll run up and down the stairs. He'll even go on the balcony because of being around Beauregard. So I'm telling you, even dogs experience this, that when you get around people who are unafraid, they're doing more than you, all of a sudden it becomes contagious and you start thinking, God has more for my life. I'm not just gonna sit back in fear and just watch everybody else live their dreams. I'm going for it. So, I'm not comparing you to dogs, but I kinda am. So, hurry and get registered for icing and let me tell you what we're doing. We have a giveaway for icing. So what we're doing right now, when you register for icing, and all you have to do is click the link in the description. If you'll scroll down to the bottom, you'll see a link to register for icing. And for those of you who are registering, we're gonna do a drawing. Is it this Friday? This Friday, we're gonna do a drawing. Let me tell you what we're gonna give you. There's gonna be two winners, and we're giving you this icing bag right here. This is a tote bag, but on the inside, you are gonna have let me grab this. A devotional called The Invitation. Now, I was a contributing writer to the devotional. There's lots of writers in here, and I've already signed it. And you're gonna get my book, Dream It, Pen It, Live It, which I've already signed. These will be the ones we're gonna give away. This is gonna teach you how to make a vision board. And we're gonna give you this tumbler set of five tumblers, and listen to what they say, five different colors. 
and it says, don't shrink your dreams, enlarge your faith. Isn't that awesome? That was a phrase the Lord told me in prayer. Yes, when you drink these tumblers, they change colors. Like this pink one will turn purple. So anyway, all of this is stuffed into this bag right here. And we are gonna give away two of these this Friday. So you have to be registered to win. So register today to come to Icing Dallas, September 4th and 5th, or Icing Orlando, November 6th and 7th. So we are gonna have so much fun and I promise you we're gonna go by the CDC guidelines. Your health, your safety is our most important role here is to make for sure you're safe. So we've already talked to the arena. They're gonna set up these clusters of chairs so you can sit with your friends. We will have masks, we'll do the right things, but more than anything, you are gonna get the inspiration the anointing, the favor of God to live your dream. So, register today and we will give away two of those icing totes with all those goodies in it. Does that sound good? Okay, let me tell you real quick. This month, we are talking about the five things successful people do before 8 a.m. And we're teaching straight from my kit, which has all these goodies on the inside of it. Now, um, let me just compare it like this. I heard somebody compare life to the game of football. Nancy, you got your ticket. So, somebody compared life to the game of football. And they said football is like 60,000 people who desperately need exercise watching 22 men who desperately need rest. They said, but football is like life because most people watch from the sidelines. Very few people get off the bleachers and get in the game. But, I believe you are in the game or you wouldn't be watching a book club about success, about discipline, but it's gonna take a lot more discipline to stay in the game, right? So that's what this month's book club and this kit is all about. It's about teaching you the success habits that are gonna absolutely transform your life. So when you get the kit, the five things kit, I put in here the very tools that I've needed in my life to develop a lifestyle of discipline. So when you get this, you're investing in yourself. And of course, we have the special code this month where when you put in the, the promo code book club, you get $40 off the kit. So this kit sells for $97, but when you put in the code book club, you get $40 off. So you will not pay 97, you'll only pay 57. So let me just say real quick, there comes a time in all of our lives when we come to a fork in the road. And yes, I have a giant fork right here. <laughs> a giant fork in the road where you have to make a decision. And the decision I'm talking about is a decision to take 100% responsibility for your life. For your life, for where you are today and for where you're headed tomorrow. In fact, I love this about um, Zig Ziglar. He said years ago, he was just a struggling young guy aspiring to be a motivational speaker. And he heard this man make this statement at a conference. He said, you are where you are because that's exactly where you chose to be. He said, I was broke, in debt, and down in the dumps. But he said, it came through loud and clear that I was where I was and what I was because of me, because of my choices. And he said, right then and there, he made a destiny decision to turn his life around and he started investing in himself. He started changing his habits. Well, Zig Ziglar has gone down in history as one of the greatest motivational speakers of our day, right? Well, the same thing happened in my life where I hit that all-time low in 2002 when I looked at my life and I said, something has to change. And I remember I was wanting everything around me to change. I wanted my husband to change because we were separated. I didn't want to be married anymore. And I remember someone saying to me, Terry, stop looking at everything else. You work on you. And I remember hearing Joyce Meyer say, God will change your circumstances, but he'll change you first. Well, I didn't have a kit with all these tools in it. I just sat down by myself and I got out a journal and I just began writing five things I was gonna make myself do every single day for 21 days. Now that was my goal, 21 days. Well, I grabbed a calendar, which this is in your kit also, and it's a habits calendar. And I started just keeping track of my habits, 
every single day. And I was determined to not miss a day, to cross through my calendar of keeping my commitment with myself. Now keep in mind, I didn't announce to the world, I'm doing these five habits, I'm disciplined, look out, things are changing. No, I kept this between me and God. I didn't tell a living soul what I was doing. But I did it again the next day, and I did it again the next day, and I started keeping that commitment with myself. Well, all of a sudden, I started building momentum. I didn't want to miss a day. All of a sudden, 21 days turned to a month, to two months, to three months, to four months. I mean, you've heard me tell the story. That was in 2002, and I haven't stopped. So, that's what this kiss is, kit is about. I said kiss. That's what this kiss is about. <laughs> This kit is about keeping your commitment with yourself. It's about developing a lifestyle of discipline that's gonna transform your entire life. So let me just tell you real quick what's in it so that you don't miss out and miss out on the discount that we're doing because of the book club. So it has my book, Five Things Successful People Do Before 8 a.m. This is a pretty big book, but we timed it because you also get, oops, let me rip this off real quick you get the entire audiobook on a flash drive. So, it took me, well this is what we discovered. If you were to read 20 minutes every single day for 21 days, you would finish the book. So you can finish this entire book in three weeks with a simple dose of 20 minutes a day. I also gave you the audiobook so you can listen to it while you're getting ready, while you're driving, while you're going for a walk, while you're loading the dishwasher, listening because this is one of the habits of the most successful people. It also comes with a journal for you to start journaling your time with the Lord. You get clarity for your life. And it comes with the habits calendar. So this is not a regular calendar, this is a habits calendar. And this is gonna become your best friend to keep you disciplined, to keep you motivated. You're gonna love this thing. So again, it sells for $97.00. But if you use the promo code book club, you get $40 off. So be sure and get your kit so you can get started today. Plus, oh, I forgot to tell them. When you order the kit, I will instantly send you the ebook absolutely free so you can start reading today. Does that sound good? Okay, let me do a recap real quick. I wanna make for sure, I'm gonna go over two chapters today on um, two of the habits, but I wanna recap really, really fast. So let me just say that this book covers this powerful principle. Listen to this. People are rewarded in public for what they practice in private. Did you hear me? People are rewarded in public for what they practice in private. So really and truly, it's all that that's going on behind the scenes. That's what prepares you for success. That's where, you know, they say champions don't become champions in the ring. They're merely recognized there. It's all those practices behind the scenes that's preparing them to get in the ring, right? So that's what this is about. And about the phrase that I heard years ago that changed my whole life, and it was by John Maxwell. You know, he made this statement. He said, if I could come to your house and watch you for 24 hours, I could tell whether or not you're gonna be a success or a failure. He said, you pick the day, but let me just watch you from the moment you wake up until you go to bed that night. He said, just by observing you in one full day, I can tell if you're gonna be a success or a failure. Then he said this, he said, the reason I say this is because the secret of your future is hidden in your daily routine. The secret of your future is hidden in your daily routine. Now I just noticed, I didn't see the full comment, but somebody was talking about struggling with depression and things like that. You know, back when I started these habits, I was the most depressed I've ever been in my life. And I'm not a depressed person, but I was separated. I had no vision for my life. I had no big goals to pursue. But what happened was this little calendar, this right here became my vision for life. Just tracking my habits every single day, it gave me a reason to get up in the morning. It gave me a reason to wake up and accomplish those five things. Well, the more you do these five things, depression begins to lift off of you. Joy begins to just flood your mind. Peace begins to take over in your heart. And you begin to get vision for your life again. So, I'm telling you, 
These five habits, to me, is the solution to everything. When I've had friends who are going through a divorce or they're struggling with things, I always tell them it goes down to the habits. Let's start doing these morning habits. So, anyway, chapter one talks about how to stop killing time and how people will say to me, Terry, I don't have time to do these five things. Are you kidding me? Well, this chapter is gonna help you identify where you may be wasting some time, but you never thought of it that way. So to adopt these habits. You know, in fact, Olympians, they say that they don't view time in hours, they view time in minutes. Like if they have five minutes to sit at a doctor's office, then they're gonna take a book and read during those five minutes. So this chapter will help you start locating times to invest in yourself. Chapter two, we talk about the five morning habits for a successful life. Now, let me just share this with you real quick. Somebody sent me this from Entrepreneur Magazine. So this was not um, my opinion, and I'm not trying to, I don't know, I don't like saying the words poor and rich, but they were doing research on the habits of wealthy people versus habits of poor people. I just wanna read these to you so that you see a common theme in these habits. So listen to this. I have an illustration here of the habits of wealthy people versus the habits of poor people. So listen to this. Entrepreneur Magazine did this study. They said, how many people wake up three or more hours before they go to work? 44% of the wealthy, 3% of the poor. They said, how many listen to audio books during their commute to work? 63% of the wealthy, 5% of the poor. They said, how many read books 30 minutes or more every day? 88% of the wealthy, 2% of the poor. How many exercise four days a week? 76% of the wealthy, 23% of the poor. Then they asked, how many watch reality TV? 7% <laughs> of the wealthy, 78% of the poor. How many believe good habits create opportunities? 84% of the wealthy, 4% of the poor. So, it's like Dave Ramsey says, if you wanna be rich, study rich people. If you wanna be successful, study successful people. So my point is, they all seem to have the same common habits. Now that's why I want you to not get overwhelmed with this because notice, it's not 27 things successful people do every day, no it's Five, five habits of the most successful people in the world. So my point is, we can do this. If all successful people seem to have this in common, then if we were to do this, we would also be successful, right? So that's why in chapter two, I teach you what the five habits are and then I break them apart in the following chapters. So I'm not gonna go over all of these because we talked about it before. But I will just say real quick, chapter three was on the habit of prayer and meditation. Where do I get my props? Oh my gosh, I find them at the dollar store. I find them on clown websites. <laughs> I love my props. So chapter one is about praying and meditating. And if you're gonna only pick one habit, this is the one you wanna start with. Because when you start making prayer and meditation one of your priorities every single day, you know what's gonna happen? You're gonna draw closer to God. You're also gonna get direction and wisdom for your life that you've never had before. And that's why I put a journal in your kit because this right here is gonna be your GPS. This is where you're gonna start identifying what God wants you to do with the rest of your life. So that's, chap that's um, habit number one. Habit number two is all about um, reading. It's all about the necessity to start making yourself read books. And I talk about how I hated to read, but I started forcing myself to read by setting the timer on my phone and reading books that would impact my life. Well, the more I read, the more I began to desire to read. Why? Because it was changing my thinking. And the more I learned, the more I began to earn. My salary improved because I was reading, I was learning, I was growing, I was coming up with ideas at my job that people would say, how did you come up with that? And I would think, I don't know, it must be something I read. So that's what the next chapter is, habit number two, which is reading. The third habit is listening. Listening to faith-building motivational messages every single day. 
So that's what you're doing right now. So you could already check this off. Every time you force yourself to just listen, and this is the easiest of all the habits because you can listen while you just keep your regular routine. You know, I was thinking about this morning, I was at the gym and I was on the treadmill and I'm always listening to messages while I'm on the treadmill. I was watching HGTV, but I'm listening to motivational messages. So as I'm listening, I'm hearing a story about this guy who was headed to play professional football. He's playing college football and he got in an accident on the field and it paralyzed him from the neck down. And I'm listening to his story of how inspirational he is. He's in a wheelchair, but he's successful. He started businesses and he's motivating other people. And there I am on the treadmill hearing his story. And you know what? It just changes your mindset. Just even with exercise, it made me start thinking, man, don't ever dread coming to the gym. It's a blessing that I get to come to the gym. This guy would have loved to have been able to get on a treadmill and walk that morning. Instead, he's grateful that he gets to inspire people with his words. But that was just me listening to a message this morning while I'm on a treadmill. So when you start making that a habit in your life of just hearing something that's gonna inspire you, it changes your outlook in every area of life. So that's the third habit. So let's talk about the fourth and fifth. You ready? Chapter number, what is this? Chapter six is all about how to set and achieve any goal you have in life. Now this talks about habit number four, which is write and review your dreams and goals. Of course, I got my giant pencil here. You have to write your dreams and goals. Now some people, a lot of successful people, they actually write their goals every single day. I only do that in the month of January, just to get them ingrained in me. I write them down every single day for 30 days. But what I do, and you can do that, but what I do is I actually review my dreams and goals every single morning, every single morning. When I get back from the gym, I go to my little prayer room and part of my time in prayer is praying over my dreams and goals. And at the end of every month, I like to update them. Like, where, I, where am I with this habit or with this goal? Have I achieved anything? Have I achieved a milestone? So every single morning, they're constantly before my eyes, so it keeps me motivated to pursue them. Now, let me just say real quick, in a TED Talk, they um, surveyed, this is on page 105, if you're following along, on page 105, I talk about a TED Talk where this girl named Kimberly, I'm gonna move this down a little bit, um, she surveyed 600 people in their 70s to understand what caused greater regret, the things they did or the things they didn't do. Here's what she discovered. If you could live your life over again, what would you do differently? A staggering 54% agreed that they regretted all the things they had missed out on or wished they had done. And what they discovered was that the regret we feel for things we've done it only lasts at most a couple of years, but the regret for things we never did, it lasts a lifetime. So the point of putting this in here was to say, don't make regrets. Make a list of everything you want to accomplish and then start going for it. Start writing your dreams and goals. So I tell a story of a guy named John Goddard. Now, he's what you would call the real Indiana Jones. That's his nickname. But what happened was when John Goddard was a little boy, he was like 15 years old, he said that so many times his parents would have people over for dinner. And he would hear them talking about all the things they wish they had done, the places they wish they had traveled, the things they wish that they had seen or done or experienced. And he said at 15 years old, he just made a decision, that's not gonna be my life. I am not gonna come to the end of my life and sit at the dinner table and just talk about all the things I wish I had done. So you know what he did? He went upstairs to his bedroom, he got a pen and paper, and he wrote down a list of what he was gonna do during his lifetime. And these were crazy things, fun things, like visit a movie studio, read the Bible from cover to cover, write a book, dive in a submarine, ride a horse in the Rose Bowl Parade, ride an elephant, um, photograph Niagara Falls, learn to fly an airplane, um, visit the Eiffel Tower and the Great Wall of China. 
I mean, just all this stuff. Learn French, learn Spanish, travel through the Grand Canyon by foot and by boat. So, listen to this. He wrote 127 things that he wanted to do. Well, in 2013, at the age of 88 years old, that's when he passed away. And he had accomplished 120 of the 127 things on his list. It was like the ultimate bucket list back in 1940. That's when he wrote that. So, I want you to make a list. And of course, this chapter is gonna walk you through how to start making a list. In fact, listen to what Jeremiah 1, 5 says. It says, I have chosen you and have not cast you away. Before I shaped you in the womb, I knew all about you. Before you saw the light of day, I had holy plans for you. So think about that verse. God is saying he has plans for your life and it's time to live them out. So this chapter is going to walk you through the five steps to live your dreams. Everything from how to visualize your future. Yeah, some of you were asking, there's my giant vision board back there. I teach you how to start imagining where you want your life to go. Number two, how to start writing your dreams and goals. And there's so many cool stories in here. Those of you who have kids, um, young people, teenagers, college students, they will love this book because there's cool stories like of Michael Jackson, how he, um, he actually wrote what he wanted to be back in 1979. He wrote it on the back of an itinerary. Well, years later, after he died, they found that written vision in his warehouse on his property. And you know what? He, he achieved, or I was gonna say he lived exactly what he wrote. It's amazing, so I talk about that story. But how to make a vision board, how to make a vision book. Um, also, how to start taking action. Because they say the one thing that separates winners from losers more than anything else is winners take action. So, Robin, you said that makes my list look lame. I know, me too. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? It's okay. Write what speaks to you. And it could be things like, you know, reading a certain amount of books or reading certain books that are all the classics. Like right now, I'm reading some of the most classic books. And it's fun because I want to be able to check those off and say I read these incredible books. But just make a list that means something to you. So I talk about on page 125 how to take action. And you have to think about what does that mean to you? Because the Bible says faith without corresponding action is useless, it's dead. So that could be things like write a chapter of the book you say you're gonna write. Get your resume typed. If you're believing God for a new job, start typing your resume. You're saying you wanna lose weight, join a gym or start going for a walk. Um, you say you wanna travel, get your passport, go ahead and get it. Um, Save $100, register for whatever you need to do, test drive your dream car, research the business, start taking lessons, call a mentor, go on a trip. So I teach you how to start taking action. Yes, winners take action. And then the fifth point was to believe. And I talk about how you're gonna get in life exactly what you believe. So listen to this scripture. The Bible says in Psalms 84, 11, no good thing will he withhold from those who walk uprightly. Psalm 37, 4 says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So this whole chapter is all about discovering your dreams, making a vision board, making a, a dream book, whichever one you want or both, I do both, and then how to start taking action towards your dreams. So I think you're gonna love that chapter. Let me move on to chapter seven. That's the last thing I wanna cover um, with the book. So this is the fifth habit, and it's all about how to start and maintain a fit lifestyle. Yes, habit number five is all about exercise. Now, let me just say this real fast. Successful people exercise. Now, most people have, and this is what I wrote in the first paragraph, most people have either run a couple miles, swam a few laps, or climbed a few floors before others have even had their bowl of cereal in the morning. <laughs> but let me just tell you real quick how this came about in my life as a habit. Now listen to this phrase. If it's not a habit or a hobby, it won't get done. So the goal is to make it a habit. 
Now, in 2002, I told you I was going through the roughest time in my life. Rodney and I were separated. I didn't have a success coach come to the house and tell me to do this. I was just desperate for change. And the more I began to listen to messages like you're doing today, I began to hear things like there's a connection between physical health and emotional health. Well, my emotions were such a mess at that time that I thought, wow, I need all the help I can get. And I wasn't necessarily overweight, but I was completely out of shape. And my diet back then was to eat a bean burrito and a taco and nachos and a gigantic big old cup of sweet tea. And I really wouldn't eat hardly anything the rest of the day. I would eat like a Snickers bar at my desk or a package of crackers and really not much else. But I was desperate for change. Well, I set the alarm the first morning and I thought I'm going to dread getting up so early and doing this. And I remember, and I tell the whole story in here of how I got started. But I went outside that first morning and it was pitch dark outside. And I was a little creeped out because it was kind of scary. I could barely see anything. Well, I had my cell phone in my hand with the alarm set, and I had tear gas in the other hand just in case somebody messed with me. <laughs> and I'm walking up and down my street, and I literally could not see anything except the stars. And all of a sudden, I started talking to the Lord, and I just started pouring everything out to Him. All the pain, all the regrets, all the insecurities. And I lapped my street and I just kept talking to the Lord, telling him everything, my fears, my insecurities, my concerns. I just started pouring everything out to him. Well, before I knew it, my alarm went off and I had done a whole hour of walking up and down my street and the whole entire time I was just talking to the Lord. Now keep in mind, God already knew everything I was telling him, but it felt so good to just get it out. It felt like I was having a counseling session with the Lord. Well, I could hardly wait the next day to get up and go have another appointment with my counselor. And I did it again the next day. And I felt so good just, get, just talking to the Lord. I did it again the next day. All of a sudden, something that I thought I would dread became something I could hardly look, wait till I could do it. I was looking forward to it. So I talk about in this chapter how um, at the end of 21 days, I couldn't imagine stopping this counseling appointment because I was gaining so much clarity about my life, my personality, my weaknesses, my insecurities. Here's what I wrote on page 140. My walk with the Lord opened up a whole new world to me. I drew closer to God than I'd ever been in my entire life. In addition to hearing his voice and understanding myself better, I gained a multitude of benefits because of this discipline. I started sleeping better. I started taking vitamins. I began drinking water more than just sweet tea with every meal. I gradually started choosing a salad over a burrito. My anxiety was lifting. My mind was sharper. And as a bonus, my body started looking better. Why would I even consider stopping something that provided a wealth of benefits? And that's exactly why it's still a part of my daily five to this day. So, in this chapter, I talk about the exercise a part of your life. And here's what I want you to realize. Five minutes is better than no minutes. So don't ever look at this as, oh my gosh, I don't have time to do a whole hour. Don't even think of it like that. Just start with five minutes, start with 10 minutes. Whatever you can start with, do it consistently. Do it again the next day, do it again the next day. And if you say, you know what? I could do five minutes, I could go for a walk for five minutes. Who knows, while you're out there, it may turn into 10 minutes. But what's gonna happen is, you're gonna get addicted to this and you're gonna start saying, you know what? This isn't about being a size zero or a size six, whatever. This is about me caring about myself. This is about me working on me, my health and my energy. You know, some of you complain that you have no energy. Exercise is what gives you energy. So don't, that's why I tell you, don't make a big announcement to everybody that things are changing and I'm disciplined now. No, just start doing this and keep it between you and God. Where you say, you know what, while the kids are asleep or while, um, people are watching a movie, I'm just gonna go outside and go for a 10 minute walk and do it again the next day. And get your little habits calendar and keep track of it 
and do it again the next day and do it again the next day. And I'm telling you, something's gonna happen on the inside of you because here's the difference. You're not doing this in your own strength anymore. You've got Almighty God on your side and he's gonna come and help you and support you and aid you in this. And you're gonna become a person of discipline. And trust me, after you do this for 21 days, you do this for a month, you do this for six weeks, all of a sudden, you're gonna build momentum. You're gonna build this winning streak with yourself and people are gonna start noticing. You won't have to make a big announcement. People are gonna start saying, what happened to you? What's going on with you? Something's different, something's changed in you. They're gonna recognize this discipline that you're adopting, that you're this new way of life that you're adding to your routine. So in this chapter, I talk about how to make it a way of life and you've gotta start by visualizing your ideal body. Now, some of you may laugh, but you've probably seen this picture in my dream book where I took this woman's body and I put my head on top. I want you to do that, and I'm gonna walk you through the process of visualizing where you want your body to go, and then how to develop your own unique plan, because what works for you may not work for someone else. You know, my husband and I are so different. Like this morning, for example, I went to the gym, I read, I spent time with the Lord, I reviewed my dreams and goals. I even, I spent, I, you know, listened to messages while I'm at the gym. I even came home and took our dog for a walk after I went to the gym. And when I walked in from taking Beauregard on a walk, my husband was just waking up. I'm telling you, what works for me doesn't work for him because he's not an early morning person. So you can't compare your routine to anyone else's, but I'm gonna talk to you about how to discover what works best for you and how to start small so you're not overwhelmed. And then I also added how to make positive declarations over your body. Now, some of you did this. Ooh, I love my French friend here. J'ai commencé avec la première habitude. I love it. They've already started the habit of prayer and meditation. I love it. It's gonna change your whole life. So, I've got on point number five under exercise, the power of speaking positive declarations over your body and speaking God's word over your body, which we talked about that last month. And so many of you started doing this and the weight is falling off of you. I've gotten so many testimonies from you and I'm thrilled to hear that because God's word never fails. So I think you're gonna enjoy this chapter because it's not gonna be something that you do because spring break is coming or because summer's coming or a big occasion. Exercise is gonna become a way of life for you. It's just what you do. You think of it like brushing teeth. Yeah, there's lots of times you don't feel like brushing your teeth, but you do it anyway. It's the same with exercise. You could do 10 jumping jacks and at least you did something, right? So anyway, um, let me just say real quick, two phrases that stood out to me as I started developing these five habits. Um, one of them was, I heard a preacher say this, he said, God can't use you publicly until you get victory privately. Did you hear that? God can't use you publicly until you get victory privately. Now, the other phrase was, like I said at the beginning, people are rewarded in public for what they practice in private. So this is all part of God preparing you for the next level that he wants to take your life. So I wanna challenge you to get your kit Start these habits. When you get your kit, I told you to promise me you're not gonna make an announcement. Just get this little kit, open it up, and start with habit number one. Start by reading. Start by, you know, reading a little bit every day. Listen to the messages. Get your habits calendar and start marking your progress. And I'm telling you from experience, you will not be where you are today next year at this time. People are gonna be saying, what has happened in your life? you're gonna start saying, it's my routine. If you'll change your routine, you'll change your whole life. So, coucou de Paris, Sully Marc, bonjour mon ami. <laughs> I love it. So don't forget, those of you who are getting your kit, use the book club code in your promo code. Use book club and you will get $40 off the entire kit. So you will not pay 97, you'll get it for 57. So hopefully you can take advantage of that right now and get started on your habits. Now let me just say this real quick as we're getting ready to close out. Um, some of you have asked me about the Genesis 26:12 principle. Now, 
a lot of you know what I'm talking about, but some of you may not. And this was something the Lord put on my heart, and there's such an anointing on this. And I thought the Lord wanted me to just share this in the month of May or June, but the Lord told me to keep it going. Well, this was based on the pandemic and everything that we're going through. Whenever, <laughs> Stacy says, I love your French. Um, Merci beaucoup. So whenever this pandemic broke out and, you know, you could freak out, you could panic and be like, oh my gosh, everything we thought we were going to do, like all the dreams and goals that are on that vision board, it looks like it's not going to happen. My conferences have been canceled. All these things were canceled. And the Lord specifically took me to Genesis 26, 12. Yes. Look at all these people who were telling me they're doing the 26, 12. I, the Lord told me to read that, and this is what it says. It says, when Isaac planted seed in that land, Isaac reaped in the same year a hundred times as much as he sowed, and the Lord blessed and favored Isaac. Well, the Lord led me to that scripture and told me that we were supposed to sow seed during this famine that the world's going through. Well, that's usually not what you want to do. You want to hang on to everything you've got, but the Lord told me, get your seed in the ground. Well, you've heard the stories probably. We did that. And we started sowing 2612, like 2612, just to make it memorable. Well, God blessed us so big in the month of May that we were just like, what? Here we are in a pandemic and we're sowing 2612 every single week and our ministry actually broke records. Well, I thought we were supposed to stop doing this, but the Lord told me to keep going. So in the month of June, we did it again. We sowed 2612 every single week. And you know what? June was phenomenal. So then in July, I thought, surely the Lord's done with this. And he told me to keep it going. Don't stop yet. We kept sowing 2612 every single week, including this week. Y'all, I'm telling you from experience, this has been another record-breaking month where every single month God is overwhelming us. Well, me and Rodney, me and my husband, we started doing the same thing back in April and March. We started doing that. And keep in mind, we're in the same boat as you are. Rodney and I are believing God to build our house, but everything's on hold right now with the pandemic. And you know, when you're going through this, you think this is the time to hold on. Personally, we wanna hold on to everything. He told me, do like Isaac did. Isaac sowed seed in famine and he didn't just reap a harvest, he reaped a hundredfold. So Rodney and I decided we're gonna do that. So every single month we've been sowing big time, 2612, 2612, 2612. Y'all, I have never experienced anything like this in my life. God has blessed us so big that I don't even totally understand what is happening. And even this morning, when I was walking Beauregard up and down the street, I said, Lord, do you really want me to keep sharing this? And he told me to just share from my heart, share from my experience, yes, to keep sharing it. Because some of you are believing God for massive breakthroughs in your life. You're believing God to build your house. You're believing God to pay your bills. You're believing God for a new job. You're believing for major breakthroughs. Well, the key is to get your seed in the ground. Two things that I believe have caused our ministry and caused me and Rodney to have the most phenomenal year. And not just us. Some of you have sent me the most incredible testimonies. And I totally believe, number one, it's the seeds we're sowing and it's the words we're speaking. The seeds we're sowing and the words we're speaking. So I wanna challenge you, get your seed in the ground. Sow 2612, there is such an anointing on this revelation, this principle. Maybe it's $26.12. Um, yes, in fact, Genevieve is asking where to send 2612 to our ministry. If you'll click the link in the description of this video, there's a place to give. And I want to say thank you, Genevieve. That blesses my heart so much because you're going to help us bring in these young girls into our icing conference and help them with our outreaches. So thank you, thank you, thank you. But you know, I believe when you get your seed in the ground, the next thing you need to do is print Genesis 26, 12. And see, this is what I've done. I said, when Terry, I took out Isaac and I said, when Terry planted seed in the ground, Terry reaped in the same year a hundred times as much as she sowed. And the Lord blessed and favored Terry. And you know what? 
I say this every single morning during my prayer time. I get this out and I just speak it out loud. Do you think it's a coincidence that I'm experiencing something I've never experienced in my life? Well, I believe it's your turn, and I know many of you are already experiencing it, but God's not finished. So, I want to close out by saying, so 2612, maybe it's $261.20, maybe it's 2612, maybe it's more than that, maybe it's $26.12, but get, I know it's upside down, but you get the gist, right? So get your seed in the ground, and I'm not just saying so to us, so wherever God tells you to sow, but I do believe there's an anointing on this revelation for our ministry. So if God leads you to sow into our ministry, click the link in the description or go to terry.com slash give, and you can get your seed in the ground. But don't forget, print out a copy for yourself of Genesis 26:12 and put your name in there and start decreeing it every single day. So... I hope this was a blessing. I hope it helped you. Again, I, I wanna apologize for my voice. I'm still receiving healing, so please pray for my voice. It's healed in the name of Jesus. Whatever these allergies are that are trying to keep me from talking, I'm healed in Jesus' name. So, thank you for joining with me, and I can't wait to see you next week on the book club. That'll be our final week to talk about the five things successful people do before 8 a.m. And hey, I read all of your comments, so be sure and, oh, Let's close out with a declaration. I've been telling you every week to declare, I am disciplined. So put that in the comments below. Make it a big, strong declaration. You're saying it by faith in the name of Jesus. I am disciplined. Put that in the comments and I'll be sure and read all of them. Thanks for joining me. Love you. Bye-bye.